Merry Christmas, St. Paul's. Merry Christmas, St. Paul's. Paul's. Come on, you 11 o'clockers have got to give the people something to shout about. That's right. I wonder, I wonder if you, like me, come to this Christmas Eve with a strange mix of emotions. I am grateful that this year some of us can be gathered here together in person for Christmas Eve. And I am very sorry that we cannot yet all be. I am filled with joy at the signs of our tradition that surround us and that remind me where I am and why we are here tonight. This year, the return of the great wreath, the poinsettias at the altar, and our beautiful nativity set from Guatemala. And I grieve the loss of carefree gatherings. I miss the faces of those whom we have lost since the last time we were together for Christmas Eve. And yet, most of all, I am filled with hope this night. A bit surprisingly, perhaps, but this year, this Christmas Eve, I find my heart being pulled toward what might lie ahead for each of us, for all of us. Tonight, I am longing in the worst kind of way or maybe the best kind of way. I wonder, tonight, for you, is the Christmas you are celebrating tonight a relic of the past, or is it a gateway to a future yet untold? Some of you may have seen a recent post I made on social media about making a cheesecake. Preparing to visit my side of the family for our Christmas gathering in Rhode Island, I set about making the cheesecake my mom would make each Christmas. The title on the recipe card states simply, Grandma's Famous Cheesecake. I was surprised at how sad I became while making it, the first time I had done so since she passed. But following those well-worn directions and immersing myself in my mom's characteristically gorgeous handwriting, the tears began to flow. And then there was this moment of laughter. If you are a fan of a TV show that features characters named Moira, Johnny, Alexis, and David Rose, the title of this show not being entirely appropriate for a Christmas Eve sermon, you'll know why her instruction to me to fold in the cheese made me laugh. As I thought about this moment with the cheesecake, I realized it wasn't just about missing my mom. It was about longing. It was about a desire to feel some of the things I had felt whenever I would see that cheesecake out on the buffet table. I realized what I was feeling was a deep desire I have now that my son will know the kind of love that I knew. It was a hope that someday that love will continue to grow in him and that he will be able to look around at his life like I can look around at mine now and see it filled with people who love. Not just him, but who love each other. 
those tears I was shedding, they weren't just about a bygone past. They were about a furiously hoped for future. You see, I think that's what happens. I think that's what happens when Jesus meets us in our longings. They become suddenly possible hopes for a future where God's dream for the world becomes the reality in which we will be living our everyday lives. Everyone we meet in the story of Jesus' birth are at a moment in which the achings of their hearts, the achings of their hearts and souls, and the promises of God meet. The terrifying circumstances under which they are living their lives, that becomes the very ingredients that make possible the birth of God with us. The despair of those poor and outcast shepherds, the despair itself cracks their hearts open to hear the promise that God has come to them. And their fear, their fear keeps them running right into the manger where the baby Jesus lays, newborn and wriggling. Those who were the first to know God in human form were not those who were comfortable with where their lives were at the time. They were those who were grieving for what was not and who were aching at the core of their soul for what yet might be. And they knew, they knew, though they had very little reason to believe it at all, they knew that that child had been born and had been born for them. They heard as they stared at the infant in the hay, they heard the words of their prophet Isaiah that they had been taught to hold on to when the world got too uncertain, too harsh, or too unknown. They heard Isaiah speak to them. A child has been born for us, a son given to us. Well, my friends, a child has been born for us, too. This promise, this promise that God makes, it's not meant just for those people who we read about in Scripture. That promise was for us, for you, and for me. God longs to meet us in our longings. God is born for us that our fears of what is no longer or has never been, they might be transformed into a hope for what yet might be. There are some in the world, and maybe you know a few, who see no need, no use for what this Christmas is all about. To them, the world is a place filled only with loss, devoid of any potential. And there are others who, bless their hearts, know only hope. The young children in our lives will go to bed tonight dreaming only, I pray, of what might just be waiting for them in the morning. And most of us, well, most of us are somewhere in between. Most of us come to this night carrying our own life's worth of grief, of worry, of doubt, and fear. And we hold on to the hope that still somehow dwells within us. 
We hold on to that hope that speaks to us from the pages of scripture or from an old recipe card of a future we long to inhabit. And that, my friends, is just where Christ is born. To you, this night. All our fears, all our hopes, met perfectly in a baby who will, if given the chance, change us that we might just change the world. Amen. As we rejoice in the coming of the Word made flesh, let us pray for our own needs and the needs of the world. Christ, born in a stable, give justice to the poor. Jesus, Savior, hear our prayer. Christ, for whom the angels sang, Give the song of the kingdom to all who weep. Jesus, Savior. Hear our prayer. Christ, worshiped by the shepherds, give freedom to all who are oppressed. Jesus, Savior. Hear our prayer. Christ, before whom the Magi knelt, give humility and wisdom to all who govern. Jesus, Savior. Hear our prayer. Christ, whose radiance filled a lowly manger, give the glory of your resurrection to all who rest in you. Jesus, Savior. Hear our prayer. Jesus, Savior, child of Mary, you know us and love us. You share our lives and hear our prayer. Glory to you forever. Amen. Amen. Beloved, may the peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. Let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Peace to you all. Please be seated for a few announcements. Again, it is our blessing and our joy that you are here. Welcome. If you are new or visiting St. Paul's for the first time tonight, a particular welcome and blessing to you. We hope that you will use the QR code on the back of your bulletin uh, to fill out a little connect card. Uh, let us know a little bit about you so that we can be in touch and let you know what's happening in the life here at St. Paul's. Um, we will gather again in about 10 short hours uh, on Christmas morning for our service of Christmas Day. So if you'd like to come back in the morning, we'll be here at 10, bring coffee. Um, and then we will be back here again on Sunday at 10 a.m. for the first Sunday after Christmas where we will uh, do a festive Christmas lessons and carols. So that's on Sunday at 10 a.m. We hope that you will join us uh, as we begin, not end, but begin the season of Christmas uh, together. The rest of our service uh, schedule can be found online. We hope you will take a look and join us as you are able. Uh, for the offertory, we hope that you might use the offering code, QR code on the back of your bulletin. There will also be baskets at the door on your way out. Whatever you can do to support the mission and ministry of our shared community here, know that we are grateful uh, that you are here most of all. At the time of communion, again, you'll stay in your seats and the clergy um, will bring you a host. You can also cross your arms across your chest and receive a blessing, but you won't have to move uh, anywhere during that time. We hope that you will participate uh, in the Holy Eucharist as fully as you are able and comfortable. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have with one another, especially your love. 
for these are the sacrifices that are pleasing to God. <laughs> 